Welcome everyone to this video cast. I'm here with uh, my colleague, Paul Coleman, CFP, is an advisor here with Level Financial. I'm Mike Hebern, the Chief Operating Officer for the company. And what we're gonna do, endeavor to do anyways, is we're going to try to pick apart the American Rescue Plan that was just signed into law by President Biden. Um, so Paul has done um, some very in-depth reading up on this bill, which is now a law. And we're going to, in this video, in this short video, we're going to go through the general tenets of the law and how it might impact individuals. And then we're going to have a series of videos afterwards that will go a little bit more in depth into each area. So this first video is an overview. And what I'd like to do too is encourage um, everyone watching right now to subscribe to our YouTube page. So when the new videos go live, you'll get a notification um, that the new videos are there. So let's jump right in, Paul. The American Rescue Plan, $1.9 trillion in economic stimulus. Um, it's a third round of stimulus checks. What do you know and what have you learned about the stimulus plan? Yeah, well, as an advisor, we've been pretty busy here consuming a lot of different reading on this, skimming through the actual bill, trying to understand how this may affect primarily our clients. I think uh, if you want to jump right in and keep it high level, the first thing everyone wants to know about and has probably heard about from other news sources is the stimulus check. So high level, that's going to be $1,400 per adult, $1,400 per dependent, that's $1,400. Uh, dependent is different from child, which is what the previous two stimuluses were. There's no limit on the number of dependents you can have in your household and that you'll get paid out for. Uh, so for example, so if you have uh an, an elderly dependent would that would that count as a dependent in in this case if you're claiming it on your tax return if you're claiming it okay. if you're claiming that person on your tax return as a dependent then it counts as a dependent for the stimulus check okay interesting okay and there's a phase out range ranges with those so if you make too much money you will get a reduced or potentially zero dollar stimulus check and we'll go more into that next week okay uh, next up, if you want me to keep going, unemployment benefits. So uh, this helped a lot of people through the past year of this pandemic, and the benefits were set to run out, I believe, at the end of February or possibly this first week of March. I, so I actually think the date was March 14th that the, the benefit was running out. They had to have it signed by March 14th. Um, something, something definitely to check on, but I believe it was the 14th. I, you're probably right. I knew it was basically right about now. And they got this passed and it extended all of the unemployment benefits that people are, are currently receiving through September 6th of this year. Uh, so that's a big one that will help a lot of families continue paying bills and moving. It's not just unemployment being continued, it's also that $300 additional uh, payment per week that's also being continued. And an interesting piece there, uh, this package that was just passed actually makes some of your 2020 unemployment federally tax-free, assuming you don't make too much money. And we'll, again, we'll also go into that more in depth in the near future. Uh, from there, I'll move into child tax credits. So the 2021 child tax credits, in the past, you would have received $2,000 for children on your tax return under the age of 17. They've increased that to children under the age of 18, so kids all the way up to age 17, on your tax return. And instead of 2,000, assuming you don't make too much money, there is a phase out range, you'll get 3,000 or 3,600 if the child is young enough. Uh, so that is a very big uh, increase in the child tax credit. Also- and that's, a, and that's a credit that would show up when you were doing your taxes. Um, right now in the current tax year, or is that for next year's tax returns? Great question. It is for the 2021 tax year. So okay. technically you, would, you wouldn't normally see that until you file your tax return in the spring of 22. With this, and I don't want to get into it here, but with this, there is a possibility that some of this credit will be prepaid to you by the IRS. That's uh, another okay. thing we'll dive into when we go a little deeper uh, in the okay. following weeks. Great. Uh, following child tax credits, it makes sense to go into the 2021 child and dependent care tax credit, not to be confused with the child tax credit. A lot of similar language here. 
This used to be and still is where certain eligible expenses spent on children or dependents, again, elderly parents could, could count if they were on your tax return, eligible dollars spent on their care were partially uh, refundable or creditable on your tax return. Okay. So that's been significantly increased, uh, both the amount of allowable expenses that they'll consider and the crediting rate Again, also based on income, uh, but significantly higher limits than what you had in previous years. One important note on both the child tax credit and the child and dependent care tax credit, they're both fully refundable. In the past, they were not. It is feasible that people with uh, reasonable incomes, we're not talking low income here, reasonable incomes, could be earning credits of upwards of $8,000 on the dependent care tax credit and possibly 7,200 or 10,000 on child tax credit. And if that's more than the tax bill they owed, they will get paid that back as a refund so that they can use that kind of like wow. a, a fourth stimulus check. That's, that's significant. Very significant. We'll provide a lot of help to many families. Uh, from there, I would move into health insurance and specifically the premium assistance tax credits. Uh, these are essentially the subsidies that people, some people are familiar with under Obamacare. So if you do not have health insurance through your employer and, you, and you're not covered by Medicare or Medicaid, you would either be left with no insurance or you go out to one of your state healthcare uh, health exchanges and you purchase it. And depending on your income level, there is some level of subsidy available for many people in the past, those making less than 400% of the poverty level, uh, which is a reasonable income. Well, they're paying out higher premiums to more people. They've eliminated that 400% of the poverty level cap. So it doesn't matter how much money you make, you may be eligible for a premium subsidy to help you find a plan on these exchanges. Uh, and they're also okay. paying out larger subsidies. That doesn't mean that every single person that needs a plan gets subsidized. It means that you are potentially eligible for a plan and it should be investigated. Okay, and we'll dive and, deeper into that in a, in, a later, in a later episode. Yes, definitely. There's a okay. lot to that piece. And it, if it's something that may affect you, you're going to want to know all the details. All right. Uh, right along with these Obamacare subsidies, I would group COBRA. Uh, that stands, actually, I'm not going to tell you what it stands for. It's a piece of <laughs> legislation <you. laughs> passed many years ago. And essentially, it's the program that allows somebody who previously had employer-provided health insurance, it would allow them to leave that employer and continue their health insurance by paying that full premium out of their pocket, out of the employee's pocket. Well, uh, this recent plan passed had a very interesting stipulation that if you were involuntarily laid off in 2021, if you're involuntarily terminated, primarily because of the pandemic, but not necessarily just because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. the premium will be 100% covered April through September of 2021. Wow. That's, well, that's very significant. Yeah, very significant. Huge for people losing a job to, uh, to not have to worry about health insurance, especially when there's a global pandemic raging. Right. I think those are the biggest items, but there's a couple other I want to, a couple other pieces I want to touch on. Yeah, I know this so, next one is this next one you're going to talk about is pretty interesting. So, what, what's going on with student loans? Yeah, student loans. So, a lot of talk in the country about potentially forgiving some level of debt, and we know that the current administration is a proponent of that. This rescue plan that was just passed does not forgive any debt but it does give us an idea of the direction the administration is heading. And what they did do is say that, hey, if you have student loan debt forgiven between the years of 2021 and 2025, it will not be federally taxable to you. Wow. Uh, we'll definitely get more depth into that one. There are certain loan forgiveness plans that currently exist that aren't taxable, but there are other ones that are taxable and it can create a, uh, a lot of tax havoc on somebody, you would think having debt forgiven is a good thing, but it can cause a serious problem. And right. they're mitigating that issue for a four-year period or actually a five-year period. 
Very interesting. Very that a lot more to come on that topic for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Worth noting that the this plan has pumped hundreds of billions of dollars into local and state governments uh, to help them survive whatever revenue cuts they've seen with this pandemic, to help them deal with vaccine administration. Uh, a lot of money going to vaccine research and distribution, money going to high schools and colleges to help them better prepare for the return of students to come in person, filtration systems, uh, that type of thing. More money into the Triple P program. So if you're a business, uh, a business owner, or even a sole, pro sole proprietor, and you had previously considered a Triple P loan, the program is still going, you can still apply for it, and they've just funded it with more money. Also, they funded a new SBA loan that could make sense for small business owners. And one thing I do wanna mention, I don't think it affects our clients directly, but they also funded a grant program that will be available to bars and restaurants. Everybody knows that bars and restaurants for the most part have just been hammered during this pandemic. Right. And the government is attempting to help them out with a few more funds. All right. That's, you know, it's, it's interesting. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can, in a future video, spend a little time touching on, on some, of the, some of the details of the PPP, because I know some of our clients will be very interested in, in what programs, um, and the PPP program has been very complicated. There's been much written about it, um, from the difficulty of getting loans to how they get forgiven or, or, or foregone. Um, so it will be interesting to, to touch on that, I think, in a future video. What else, what else do you have for us today, Paul? Well, I think it's worth noting a couple items that are not included in this rescue plan that was just passed. So two big ones. One, required minimum distributions, uh, RMDs. There is no relief written into this plan for those. So in 2020, uh, shortly into the pandemic or, or quickly into the pandemic, the government came and said, listen, you do not have to process your RMD. So for someone that didn't need the money, they could avoid being forced to distribute it from their IRA, from their 401k. The reason this is valuable is at that time, the market was down, the stock market was down probably 35%. Mm -hmm. If the investments inside of your IRA had taken a hit, you would hate to be forced to sell those. In 2020, they gave us a break. There's no language in this 2021 plan about doing the same thing. Also of note, no language about extending the April 15th tax deadline. So that's the one a month from now regarding your 2020 tax filing deadline date. Uh, that could still come. That would typically actually come from the IRS, not from the federal government. And yeah. we may still see that, but don't yeah. plan on it. There may, I think there may be a chance that happens. I mean, I'm, I, I'll, I, I'll play a little Karnak here and say maybe there's a chance that as we get a little closer to the deadline, specifically because I think they, you know, they started the season late, um, delayed the beginning of tax season. So there's, there's, a, I think probably you might be looking at a May 1st. That's my prediction. You heard it here first. Um, so if that comes to pass, then we'll see. So, all right. Well, great. This is a, this has been a really good recap. Um, of what uh, some of the things that are inside of this new bill. And what we're inviting everybody to do is, is go to our YouTube page. You can go to YouTube, you can search for Level Financial Advisors that'll pull up our main page. Lots of videos in there already of things that we've done. Um, and if you subscribe to that, when the next video comes out, you'll get a notification right away. And we hope to uh, provide you as much information about the American Relief plan as we possibly can. So um, I'm Mike Hebern, that's Paul Coleman, and uh, we thank you for joining us this afternoon. Have a great weekend.